Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and um, go ahead and start talking. And as people join, um, Matt is uh, with me in the room right now, though he's not on video. He's going to put a Google Doc in the chat window. And that Google Doc we're going to be using throughout the day today to, um, uh, to center our conversations. Oh, I should do one other thing. So Google Doc, make sure that everyone can edit it. Um, with the link, can edit. There we go. Great. <clears throat> so, um, just as we get started here, uh, welcome everybody to our Iowa focusing um, hands on webinar. We're going to be learning how to use your hummingbirds today. Um, so, uh, as you join, if in the chat window you could just type the city and the state that you're joining us from, that would be awesome. And also, um, I don't know if you guys have ever used Menti before, but on your smartphone, if you want to go to menti.com um, and you type in those numbers, um, that'll take you to a question. And the question is just what technology do you have in front of you right now regarding robotics? So do you have a hummingbird bit, which looks like this plastic kit here? Do you have a hummingbird duo, which will look like this? It probably comes in a cardboard case. Or do you not have a robot in front of you? So if you can just answer that question, if you go to menti.com, you can answer what kind of robot you have in front of you right now, um, just so that I know who is joining us today. All right, and I will present that actually, so that if you go to menti.com and you answer those three numbers there, looks like we've got eight people joining us so far that have a hummingbird bit, which is great because that's what our training is going to be about today. But I know that a number of Iowa educators around the state have received hummingbird duos as a part of the Iowa Governor's Council on STEM um, as part of the STEM startup grant. And um, they usually got those kits in like a big cabinet with some drills and sewing machines and some other tech tools. So that might be the case for you um, as you are tuning in. Um, or you may have a demo kit in front of you as well. There's a, a variety of different educators coming in. Um, but yeah, as you, as you tune in, if you can go to menti.com there and type in those numbers and just let me know what kind of technology you're working with, that would be great. And it looks like Matt has also put our Google Doc in our chat. He'll keep sharing that every few minutes or so, so that if you've just joined, um, you can click on that Google Doc. Looks like we've got a few people tuning in there already. All right, so we've connected. We've had a little bit of a welcome. We're learning a little bit about who's here and what you've got, which is great. Um, and a little bit of an introduction for me. I am Kelsey Derringer. I am the Professional Development Coordinator with Bird Brain Technologies. So that means that I travel around the country and I teach teachers coding and robotics. And with this brand new live stream learning studio that we built in the basement of Bird Brain, I can also teach coding and robotics right from home, which is pretty great. I love visiting Iowa, I love visiting Florida, but it really helps teachers um, access me quicker if I can come to you from this awesome studio right here. So um, ooh, ah. uh, we've got back here, we've got basically just like a functional maker space, um, a functional classroom that I can teach from. Um, so as we, uh, as we start our webinar off today, um, the next thing I'd like to do is I'd actually like to know why everybody here is interested in teaching coding and robotics. So I'm going to um, advance my Mentimeter slide. So I'm going to share this back here. So if you're still on menti.com, you should have a different question now. And I'm interested in why you want to teach coding and robotics. We're going to talk about this next. But there's a bunch of different answers there. There's things about economic and workforce development, citizenship and civic engagement, all kinds of different things. And I want you to pick your top two. So if you're still on Menti, and those numbers are still up there, start to put in, yeah, there we go, We've got some answers coming in. Why do you think that we should be teaching coding and robotics? Nice. 
personal agency, joy and fulfillment, technological, social, and scientific innovation, school reform and improvement. And I think the thing as these answers are coming in, it's really interesting to see what everybody believes. I think that's really important for us to connect to as we learn to do a little bit of programming today and as we learn to incorporate coding in robotics. Um, it's important for each of us to connect to our why factor. Why are we doing this? Um, sometimes uh, it might start out as, I don't know, it looks kind of fun. That might be why you start out teaching coding and robotics, but maybe as you do it more, you find that this answer becomes more important or that answer becomes more important. I know for me, my why reason was um, that uh, I started out teaching coding and robotics in an after school girls only STEM program here in Pittsburgh for inner city girls in fourth through eighth grade. And so the reason that I wanted to start working with them was I wanted to empower girls and create more opportunities for equity in all kinds of education. But in that program, we built note card towers and we engineered glitter, lip gloss, and all kinds of things like that. Coding and robotics was just a couple weeks out of our year-long program. But the more I got into it, the more I realized that to me, the way to raise up girls and students of color was to give them greater access to STEM and to the joy of doing STEM and STEAM and to make sure that they saw themselves in those careers and in those skills and in those capabilities. So my why factor, if I can hop over here really quick, was really all about equity. But there's a lot of really great reasons why you would want to do coding and robotics. And we might have time at the end to come back to this, um, this graph again and see if any of our answers have changed a little bit. But it looks right now that our two most popular answers are around personal agency, joy, and fulfillment, and technological, social, and scientific innovation, which is really interesting. It's good to know uh, who we have coming in. Awesome. Um, so let me go back to our Google Docs so I can keep us on schedule. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and dive right into your hummingbird kit. So hopefully you've got that in front of you. Yours might look like mine. Yours might be a little bit smaller. Um, it looks like everybody joining us so far does have the bit kit, which is great. Um, some people might have a duo, but if you open it up, you just hit those two purple buttons, slide them out. And if you open it up and you look inside, you'll see there's some LEDs, there's some sensors, there's a this hummingbird thing. There's, it kind of looks like a lot of wires to start out with. And I know when I was first given a robot, I'm a certified middle school English teacher, not a coding and robotics teacher. I was given a gallon sized baggie full of this stuff and told you're doing robots next week. And that was a little bit, uh, it was a little bit overwhelming for me. So let's break that down and figure out what's in a robot and what a robot really is. So when we talk about robotics, we talk about this sense think, act model. So sensing is anything with a red, a yellow, and a black wire. Those are all sensors. So if you've got a demo, a base kit, a little smaller one, you might have just the dial sensor and the light sensor. If you've got a premium kit, which is a little larger, you might also have a sound sensor and then a distance sensor as well. You might have all four of those. The thinking takes place on the hummingbird, and on your micro bit, if you find this little metallic package and you pull your micro bit out, that's where the thinking happens on your robot. You can actually just plug this in right there. And we'll do that together in just a second. And then the acting, well, what does your robot do? Well, the outputs are LEDs, tricolor LEDs, and motors. There's a couple different types of motors. You might have one that looks like that, or you might have one that looks like this. So those are your actions. So when we think about what a robot is and what is in your kit, it's just a bunch of sensors, a thinker, and some action things. Well, what can you do with sensors and a brain and some actions? Especially when I first saw this for the first time, I was like, oh, like it, it only has lights and motors. Like I kind of wish that it did a little something more. But with just lights and motors, you can make any and all of the robots that are beeping and booping and bopping around on my shelf back here. So you can make all kinds of content connections. You can see this arm that's moving slowly. We've got this robot petting zoo owl here. This of course is Abraham Lincoln 
he's ready to give you his great speech, one of them. And uh, we've got Harry Potter looking around. We've got this interactive map showing the migration patterns of monarch butterflies. And I'm gonna show you how to find all of those projects on our website as well. But just with sensors, with your board, and with lights and motors, you can build anything that you can think of because you combine those things with craft supplies and you program them in a way that I'm gonna show you and they can do anything. Um, just as a quick note, if you've got a duo, this is what your board will look like, or if you work with any teachers, if you're tuning in from one of the AEAs, or if you have an older version of Hummingbird, this is what your board will look like. This is what your motors will look like. Motors look a little different. There's this big kind of chunky one here. There's some LEDs. And this is what your sensors will look like. There's a few different sensors. There's five potential different sensors that come with a duo board. But it's all basically the same thing. So, all right, let me clear those things out of the way here, and let's get to programming your hummingbird. So here we go. If you could grab out the following things. You wanna grab out your hummingbird, like so. You wanna grab out your micro bit, like yeah. You'll wanna grab out your USB cord. Yours might be black, it might be white. Mine is white. You'll wanna get your battery pack here, and your battery, your battery pack takes four AA batteries. So hopefully you have four AA batteries on hand, but they just plug in like that. You just put them in your battery pack. So you'll need four AA batteries. You could also get a wall mount if you wanted, but we find that it seems to be better to have a battery pack. And you'll also want your terminal tool, which is this orange poking stick right there. So those are the things that you're gonna to wanna to grab out of your hummingbird. And if you need to go grab batteries, run and grab those really quick, because I'm gonna talk about these two things right here, the micro bit and the hummingbird. So this right here, if you're not familiar with it, this is a micro bit. It is a super powerful little computer science tool. It's got these A and B buttons you can use as inputs. This is an LED screen that you can use to display words or display um, pictures, things like that. These on the bottom here, these gold things, these are ports. You could plug in um, and attach some LEDs or some motors. And if you turn it over on the back, you'll see, see what it says, BBC? We don't actually make this. This is from the BBC Foundation. We just really like this as a microcontroller. A micro bit is a type of microcontroller, just like an Arduino, or your computer has a microcontroller in it, etc. cetera. Um, but this is a great little computer science tool. We like it a lot. And that's why we built our new version of the Hummingbird that came out in January around this tool. So if a school already has micro bits, they can use the micro bits that they already have, and you can just snap your Hummingbird, your micro bit right into your Hummingbird. So go ahead and do that right now. Make sure that, see how the micro bit has a front, it's got some color on it, red or blue or green or yellow. And then it's got a back that's just black and white. You wanna make sure that the front colorful side is up and you'll just snap it in there. Give it a little bit more muscle than you think maybe it needs, especially if it's the first time this one's being plugged in. If you're having troubles plugging it in, um, you can either raise your hand, which is a, a, a little feature on the, um, on the Zoom video chat, it says raise hand, and Matt's here, he can help you get through that. Or you can unmute yourself, and um, uh, I've, I'm hopefully allowing everybody to talk now. So there we go, allow to talk. So everybody's gonna be allowed to talk if you would like to. All right, so there is your hummingbird and your micro bit. And the thing that the hummingbird does is, if you looked at your micro bit, it's only got four ports on the bottom here. It's got ground, and then one, zero, one, two, and three, so that's four ports. When you plug it into your Hummingbird, now you've got two tri-color LED ports, you've got three single-color LED ports, those are the yellow ones, you've got four motor ports, those are little black towers on the side there, you've got three sensor ports along the bottom, and this round thing in the middle, that's a buzzer. So now you've got 12 to 13 things that your Hummingbird can do, not just four, you've got 12 or 13 of them that you can run off of the same board. So we say that the Hummingbird both um, raises the ceiling of what you can do with robotics, but also, as we're about to see, it really lowers the floor and makes it a lot easier to get started as well. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and undo your USB cord. We're gonna plug that in. One side you're gonna plug into your micro bit, and the other side, you're gonna plug into your computer. Now, we're actually gonna be using your smartphone 
to program today. So hopefully you have a smartphone handy. We're gonna be using an app altogether. It's called Bird Blocks. But to get your micro bit in the right mode, to get it into Bluetooth mode, we're gonna all do that together on our website real quick. So if you can plug one end into your micro bit like that, and then take the other end and plug that end into your computer. So I'm gonna do that right now. I actually have a long one that's already plugged into my computer. <clears throat> Great. So your micro bit may show a smiley face. It may be showing three letters, which is what we're all gonna get it to show in just a little bit. Or it may be showing like, hey, press the A button, press the B button. If this is the first time your micro bit has ever been used, it's gonna run through its hello world program, which is like, hey, try me out, try me out. We're gonna ignore it. We're gonna do something else to it, okay? So, got that plugged in, which is great. And then what we're gonna do is if you've opened up that Google Doc, and Matt, would you share that one more time just so everybody has access to it? I'm gonna go over here to our Google Doc. If you scroll down a little bit and you find one that says the Bird Brain Learning Portal, that's where we're gonna go. You can click on that, or I'm gonna show you, if you just go to birdbraintechnologies.com, and you click on get started, that will take you to the same place. So you can either go to our Google Doc, yeah, I see everybody clicking there, awesome, and you can go to the Bird Brain Learning Portal, or you can go to birdbraintechnologies.com and go to get started. So in this portal here, what this does is it allows you to choose your robot, your programming device, and your language. So we're all using Hummingbird Bit today, awesome. And then I know I'm actually on a Windows machine, but I'm not gonna select Windows right now because I'm actually gonna use my iPad to be programming today. So look at your smartphone. Do you have an iOS smartphone or do you have an Android smartphone? Pick either one of those, actually it doesn't really matter. Here we go, iPad, great. Right? And then it tells you which programming language you should use with that device. So let's say, just hypothetically, at your school, that you've got Chromebooks. Well, you could use MakeCode or Snap to program with. Let's say you've got Mac laptops. You could use MakeCode or Snap or Python or Java. It tells you what's available there. But I'm gonna be using an iPad, so I'm gonna select Bird Blocks. There we go. And then at the bottom, you can hit Get Started. So when you go through our portal, what that does is it filters out all of the information that you don't need to know. If you're um, not doing stuff with MakeCode, then hey, you don't need stuff about MakeCode. If you're not doing stuff with Py Python, you don't need that. This just gives you the information you need for the robot, the device, and the programming language that you selected. So once you go through that portal, there are four tabs, program, build, teach, and resources. Program is where we're gonna start. This is where the programming tutorials are, and this will teach you how to set up your device. So go ahead and click on program, and you'll see the first thing on there is a setup tutorial. So for, if you're using bird blocks, that's a quick seven step tutorial. So Step one is just showing you what you're gonna need, cool. Step two is to install BirdBlock. So if you're on your iPad or your smartphone, you could just go to the App Store as well and just search for BirdBlocks. I'm gonna go grab my iPad right now, which already has BirdBlocks installed. So I'm gonna do this right now and say what you should be doing is you should download the BirdBlocks app on your phone. Put that off to the side. So I'm gonna go grab my iPad, I'll be right back. All right, got my iPad, awesome. Starting it up, great. So you're getting the Bird Blocks app on your phone. Um, but as I said, you could also be using a Chromebook, you could be using a laptop, I just know that just about everybody has a smartphone, so I decided that we just use bird blocks to program today, but the process that you would use for a Chromebook or a laptop, Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever, if you were using MakeCode would be really similar. And we have these handy dandy programming tutorials to show you exactly how to do that. All right, so you're downloading the app on your phone, great. If you're having any troubles, make sure you either raise your hand so I can see that you've got a question, raise your hand in Zoom, or type your question out in the chat window. Um, but if we go to step three, that'll show you how to plug everything in. Well, we already plugged in our micro bit, great. We already plugged in our USB cord, but now we can go ahead and plug in our battery pack. That goes in just opposite the micro bit. So if I, oops, if I do that here, you can see I just plugged my battery pack in there. And then on the other side, 
See how your battery pack has a little switch on it right there? You'll switch your battery pack to on. That will give us power when we are not connected to the USB cord. Awesome. So I'm gonna head back to our website here because step four, this is the important one. So when your micro bit comes to you, it doesn't come in Bluetooth mode, but if you wanna use it with an iPad or a smartphone or whatever, you just gotta put it into Bluetooth mode, which is super easy. Watch this. You just hit this download hex file. It's just a type of file. You need to put that file on your micro bit. Download hex file. I'm gonna select my micro bit. See over here how it says micro bit, it's connected there. I'm gonna select that. And then if I make this a little smaller, you can see that I'm gonna just click save. And when I do that, look at this. Underneath, there's this little yellow light that flashes for about five seconds while it's downloading. And then once it has downloaded, it starts flashing three letters on it. Starts flashing three letters. So mine is flashing the letters S-A-R. And that's going to mean something in a little bit. Yours are probably flashing different letters. But once you download that hex file onto your micro bit, now you're in Bluetooth mode, and now you can unplug from your computer because you don't need your computer anymore to do any of the rest of our programming. It's all going to be on your iPad. And so if you have a school that has iPads, you would do this once for all of your micro bits, for all of your hummingbirds, and then you would never need to do it again. This is now in Bluetooth mode forever until we change it, which we're not going to do. Um, so I'm going to take this away, and now... There we go. We've got my iPad. Hopefully you've got your phone or your iPad. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up Bird Blocks. Cool. So now everything else that I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna show you that this all exists online. So all of these steps that I would show you that we're gonna do from here on, how to blink a single color LED, how to move a position servo, all of that exists in modules on our website. So you could just go back to our website. You don't need to write everything down or really try to remember all of it. We have these step-by-step -step tutorials that are gonna teach you, just like I'm about to teach you, how to blink a light, how to move a motor, how to use a sensor, even how to build with Hummingbird. We're gonna come back and find those things in a little bit as well. But I'm just gonna stick on this screen for now so that you can see our Hummingbird and my iPad. So now you're gonna wanna give yours a new title now. I actually program in bird blocks a lot. So I'm going to give it a new one and I'm going to call this Iowa because there's a bunch of people from Iowa in our webinar today. There we go. So you're going to give your program a title. Cool. So um, I'm not sure how many people here have done any kind of coding before and how many haven't. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview of block-based coding. So over here in the top left, if you've done any kind of block-based coding like with Scratch or Hour of Code, this is going to look super familiar. If I click on each of these different things, you're gonna see it just opens up a different folder with different blocks in it, and those blocks all do a little something different. We're gonna be working mostly with the turquoise robots blocks and the gold control blocks today. So before we can access these robot blocks though, we need to connect to our hummingbird. Um, there's somebody that's, uh, uh, the hex file, uh, there's a couple people that are a little lost. Um, the hex file is going to be in, so I'm going to just back up really briefly to show that. In the um, Bird Blocks programming page, it's going to be on step four of setup. And that's where you're going to download a hex file, this orange button here, and you're going to save it to your micro bit. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this link directly in the chat window so that if you wanna go straight there, just go to that one, it'll be step four, download that orange hex file and save it to your micro bit. There we go. Um, and if you're still having troubles in a couple minutes, just raise your hand or, um, or, or speak up in the chat window, okay. So um, I mentioned these are all different kinds of blocks, but before we can start programming, we've got to connect to our Hummingbird, which we're gonna do through the Bluetooth capabilities of your smartphone or iPad. So here's how we do that. As long as your Hummingbird is on and it's flashing those three letters, you're ready to go. So here's what we're gonna do. See this little button that looks like a bird with like a paper clip next to it? Click that and say connect device. And then, it's gonna show up all of the hummingbirds in your room that are available to be connected with, connected to via Bluetooth. 
So I've got a micro bit in my room and I've also got a bit control, which is a hummingbird bit. And I know which one is mine because of the letters. This one says S-A-R, which stands for striped apricot rooster. Isn't that fancy? And I know that's my hummingbird because this is flashing S-A-R. So I'm gonna select that one as the one I want to connect to. And when I do that, I don't know if you could hear that, but it went boo doo doo Yours probably did too. Um, but when I connect to it, it makes that little sound of success. And all of your robots blocks turn turquoise, which is how you know you've connected successfully. Um, very cool. So now we're ready to try and make something happen on our hummingbird. But what we need to do now is we need to plug something in. So we've got a humming, we've got a micro bit plugged in, we've got our hummingbird, but remember all those different components, all those different things that your kit had in it? I want you to find the single color LEDs. There's gonna be a red one, a green one, and a yellow one, all in a little bundle. And I want you to pick your favorite color. I'm gonna pick green today, because I'm feeling green is my favorite color. So a single color LED looks like this. It's like clear on the end, and then it's only got one color and a black wire. A tricolor LED will have red, blue, and green all together with a black wire, but we're just looking for a single color LED. And now, let me show you how to plug that in. I'm gonna scooch this a little bit, bring this a little closer so you can see it. So if you look here, there's these different ports. See how it says LEDs, and then there's the yellow ports, and there's one, two, and three different ports. You can tell what ports they are because it says one, two, and three. And then it also says positive and negative on it. So we're gonna plug into port one here for our single color LEDs. The black wire always goes into the negative slot and the other color always goes into the positive slot. So let me show you how to put in a wire. So you're gonna press down on the button. You're gonna insert your wire at about a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna put it down so I can do this a little easier. Press down the button, insert the, I'm gonna do the green wire into the positive slot, like so. Oops. Straighten my wire out a little bit. Press down the button, insert the wire, and then let it up, and then it pinches it in place. I'm gonna do the same thing with my black wire. Press down the button, insert the wire at about a 45 degree angle, and then let it up, and that should lock it into place. And if you ever get lost, that's totally cool because all of what I'm showing you is in this single color LED module. This is actually step two of how to plug in an LED. So you still have that up. All right, so we have a single color LED plugged in now. Awesome, let's program it. I'm gonna put our LED here so that you can see it. There we go. So there's gonna be our LED, that's what we're gonna program. And here's how we're gonna program it. So to program in a block-based coding environment, these are all of your building blocks, literally. And you're gonna take those building blocks and you're gonna drag them out into that open space there. Now you can actually zoom in on a block really close up by just pinching like that. Um, kids are actually really good at using tablets. I'm sure you know this already. I don't know if any of you have had the experience, but I watched one of my friend's three-year-olds do this to an actual photograph the other day. So like they get how this works probably a little bit better than we do actually. Um, but so you can zoom in on a block just like that. And to get your LED to turn on, let's look at this block. It says bit, which is a hummingbird bit, not a duo. LED, which is a single LED, not a tricolor LED. One is the port that we're connected to. And I said connect to port one, that's this one over here, so we can select port one. And 0% is the brightness. So what do you think we should set it at to make it all the way on? What percentage? We should probably set it to 100. So if I click in there, I can say 100, check mark. And then to activate your block, you're gonna click the part of the block that says bit. Ta-da, look at there. We got our light to turn on. All right. So uh, if you got your light to turn on, maybe do a thumbs up or a yes in the chat window. Let's see how many awesome lights we got to turn on. Yeah, I got it, I got it. Yes, oh yeah, fantastic. Cool. So hopefully we have lots of lights turning on. Remember, you just set it to 100%. Awesome, congratulations, Samantha.
I hope your event on Saturday went well, by the way. Um, <laughs> and then you click that part of the block that says bit to turn it on. Awesome. Yeah, I'm glad it went well. That's great, Samantha. You are not. I will make you a panelist again real quick. I'm not seeing a lot of the chat. Oh, promote to panelists. Thank you. Yes. Um, okay, cool. So we've got, oh, nice. Jackie got hers to come on. Very cool, very cool. Way to go. So we've got our light to turn on. Now let's make it blink. Because getting a light to turn on, pretty cool. Getting a light to blink, even cooler. So let's try it out. Um, to get it to blink, drag out another one of those same blocks, the same single LED block but leave this one set to zero and just click that one and that should turn your light off, just like that. And you could click back and forth, 100, zero, 100, zero, and that's gonna make your light turn on and off. That's one way to blink a light, but that's pretty labor intensive and robotics is all about automation. So let's snap those two blocks together and let's run this program by clicking on it. See what happens every time I click this? It goes 100% to 0%, 100% to zero, 100 to zero, and it just does that once every time I click it. That's because it reads the program from top to bottom, 100%, 0%, and then it's done. When the book is over, you stop reading, right? But let's say we want it to keep blinking. Here's what we could do. We could go into the gold control blocks. We've been in those turquoise robot blocks. Go into the gold control blocks and scroll down to find one that says repeat forever, and then put that one in the middle of nowhere for a second. So if you haven't used block-based coding before, I really love block-based coding because shape and color matter. These blocks are a different color because they do a different thing. They don't directly control the robotics components. They actually control how the components work. So see how this one is shaped a little different too? It's got this little tail. That's because you can take other blocks and put them inside. So try that. Take your two blue blocks and scooch them up until you see a little white line appear and then it'll automatically expand to give them room. And to run that program, click the thing that says repeat forever. And now look, it's going 100%, 0% repeat, 100, 0 repeat, 100, 0 repeat, but it's doing it super fast. And that's because of the speed of my Bluetooth connection. If we wanted to slow it down a little bit, let's say that's gonna give us a connection. Let's stay in our gold control blocks and find the one that says wait one second, drag that out, and snap one in between there, and then put another one underneath there. Yeah, so if we do that, now we've got a light that turns on for one second, and then it goes off for one second, and then it repeats. So the way that a wait block works is it's really p telling the computer like, okay, I know you wanna read it really fast. What I want you to do, computer, is read this block and now wait for this amount of time, keep doing whatever you were doing, before you proceed onto the next block, and now you can read it and change something. And now wait before you repeat it all the way over. So hopefully wait blocks make some kind of sense. So now we've got our light blinking on and off. Very cool. Now what can you do with a light blinking on and off? I would argue that this is not yet really a project, and for me, it's not really yet interesting. Maybe you're interested, great. For me, it's like not quite there, it's not quite cool to me yet. Let me show you how I make it cool. I have a little cardboard square somewhere. There we go. I'll just do this. I'm gonna scooch my robot stuff off to the side for a minute, and I'm gonna grab a cutting board and a cutting implement and a little bit of cardboard. So I'm gonna just cut this into a nice, yeah, nice piece of cardboard there. There we go. Um, so, uh, if I wanted to attach my LED to something, if I wanted to do something like make a um, tri uh, make a stoplight or make a little character, which is what I'm going to do now, I might want to put my LED through a hole. So if I wanted to attach my LED to this cardboard, I guess I mean I guess I could tape it, but I don't want to see the wire. I just I want it to poke through. Let me show you a cool hack how to do that. You just take your cutting implement and you cut an X. In your cardboard like so. Can you see the X in my cardboard? I'm actually going to use my poking tool to poke it through a little bit. There we go. Now you can see my X. Here's what I'm going to do with my hummingbird. I'm going to unplug my LED. So I'm going to press the buttons and pull the wires out. And I'm going to take these wires and insert them through the cardboard wires first. Now I could go LED first, but I like the way that this looks. Watch this. 
There we go. I just mounted an LED to some cardboard with no hot glue, no tape, and picture this as a box. Now my wires are hidden as well. So now if I plug this back in, it's still running the program. So if I plug in both wires again, look at there. My light is blinking and now it's in cardboard. But this still isn't quite a project yet, but I have an idea. Watch this. I'm going to make some very bad art. Get ready. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I've got a green Sharpie and I'm going to make, yeah. I'm going to make a nice little character. He's got a neck. He's going to be a happy little character. I'm going to give him a shirt because this is a school after all. We wear shirts at school. <laughs> and some pants for similar reasons. All right. I'm going to give him a little fist down here. And he's going to be a little peaceful alien. Look at there. There we go. And look at there. I have turned a blinking light into a funky little character, a funky little project with just one simple building hack. So that's a simple way that you could use an LED and that simple little building hack that I showed you. But let me show you this other thing that we did. You guys see up here my map of the United States? You have a battery pack there for me, Matt? Yeah. I'm gonna bring this down so you can actually see it a little bit better. Bring this a little closer. So, let me scooch this guy out the way. Let me switch it over. Great. So if I just plug this into a battery pack, that makes it a little more mobile. Cool. Let's look at this. This is using just single color LEDs and using that same hack that I just showed you of cutting an X through something. This is demonstrating the migration patterns of monarch butterflies, not only just where they go, but also, uh, what, how many generations it takes them. So I don't know if you guys know this, but I have a friend who's a little bit of a nerd about butterflies, and they told me that it actually takes monarch butterflies three generations to go from Mexico up to Canada. So I represented the first generation with red LEDs down here, the second generation with yellow LEDs right here, and the third generation with green LEDs up here. And if I scooch this just a little bit more, there we go, look at here. I also included a sensor on here, which we're not gonna get to sensors today, but there's a module for this. This is just a dial sensor, and it shows the different times of year. So over here is March, April, May, June, July, August, September. And as I turn my dial to point at different times, you can see when each generation is in each part of the country. So with just single color LEDs, that one little building hack, and sensors, which we didn't get to today, but which are really easy to learn, they're about as easy as LEDs, you could make an interactive map of narwhal whale migration patterns or battles in a certain year of the Civil War or whatever you wanted to show. Showing maps with time using this dial sensor, I've done a couple different ones now, is really, really cool. So you can get really creative with your curriculum integration strategies and ideas really quickly with Hummingbird. That means you can put coding in social studies or in English class or in math class or in science class really easily. So let me put this back up top here and let me show you how to access all of that information. Okay, actually I'm just gonna set this. And if that falls down, I hope you'll still love me. Okay, so, uh, so how do you find all this? All we did was blink a light today, but there's so much more that you can do with Hummingbird. Um, so I mentioned there's this single color LED here. We could also do a tri-color LED. We could use that LED screen that was flashing the letters before. We could do some really cool, fun things with that. And let me show you an overview, a place that you can see some of the, the cool implications of this. I'm going to open this R Robots tab in a new tab here. You can also get to this from our home page. But you can explore Hummingbird Kit. And I really like how we've restructured how we talk about Hummingbird on this page. Because down below here, we show you each of the components that comes with your Hummingbird Kit. And 
we show you that component working in the in context. So check this little traffic light out. How cute is that? You have a red, a green, and a yellow LED in your kit. You could make a funky little traffic light. Here's a tricolor LED project. Use that same LED hack to show Polaris, which is that particular star in the um, Big Dipper, um, doing things. Like if you're wondering what a servo is, here's a rotation servo. That works really great for wheels, but the context that Matt put it in, which you guys have interacted with Matt on the chat window, but also these are Matt's hands. So basically, you know Matt. Um, he made a mini golf course. How cool is that? You can do so many cool things with a little bit of coding, a little bit of robotics, and a bunch of craft supplies. Um, so just to um, keep us on track here, um, to uh, give you another great example of something that's really easy to do with Hummingbird, um, there is a lesson plan that I'm going to show you guys in just a little bit called the Bee Waggle Challenge. And I actually have a little video to go with that, so don't let me forget there. But what we have done is we've just explored this program page, but that's only one of the four pages on our website. And all of this stuff, as you guys are probably noticing if you're clicking around already, is all free. So program, that's some programming video tutorials. On the build page, this is where um, some teachers, I've noticed when I teach workshops, some teachers are a little bit afraid of the coding. That's where their nervousness is. Some teachers are a little bit of afraid of the craft table. So wherever your insecurity lies as a teacher, wherever your comfort lies, there's something to support you with that on our website. So on this build page, down here, these hummingbird hacks, adding hummingbird components to things, um, that's where you'd find like that LED attachment. We have another one for how to attach a servo to cardboard. If you're just not quite super comfortable with building stuff out of cardboard, maybe you haven't had a bunch of chances to do that, you don't have to know everything. We try to help you out with that. Um, there's also some really cool mechanisms here. I'm going to show you this guy because he's got some cool mechanisms. Let me turn on his battery pack here. This is a very terrifying anglerfish, as I'm sure you can tell. Does this one have two modes, Matt? Uh, so we should hit. Okay. Yes. So he's got this mouth that opens, and he's also got these eyes that turn. So the mouth is just a um, crank made out of a uh, paper clip. And the eyes, well, that's just a winch made out of a toilet paper tube. So just using regular old craft supplies. And in fact, these aren't even craft supplies. This is just recycled materials. That means it's free. You can make some really cool and interesting robots, um, like the anglerfish. But you could also take that same crank mechanism, and you could use that to open a door for a small scene that you want to make. You could take that same winch mechanism, and I've seen some great itsy bitsy spider projects where they raise and lower a spider or they raise and lower a drawbridge on a castle. That cable mechanism just uses some string and some straws and some hot glue. And to do that, I've seen people make, I don't know if you've seen our hand uh, uh, robot. That's a really great one. It could also be a giraffe's neck or a bird's wing. We just show you how to make the mechanism. You decide what you want to do with it. But in those, if I were to open those up, you can see that it actually um, has step-by-step -step video directions, just like in our video programming tutorials about how to build that thing. So if I go back to build, the other section here is some simple robots. And so you'll notice some of these robots are on the shelf behind me that we have a little bot back there that I turned into Harry Potter because basically because I couldn't help myself. Um, but there's all kinds of cool, simple robots that you could make if you're looking for like, well, where do I start? What should my first project be? If you have an idea, go for it, run with it. If you're looking for a little something, these simple robots could be a great solution for you in your classroom. Um, so there's program and build. And now we're gonna get to teach and I'm so excited because this is where I feel like it really opens up the possibilities for teachers. So on this teach page, this is where you'll find over 60 different content connected projects that you could do with Hummingbird. And really there's infinite projects that you could do with Hummingbird. These are just 60 different projects that actual teachers have done in their classrooms and that they've shared with us. So for example, I wanna take a look at Robot Shakespeare. We saw that great social studies map project. This is an awesome English project. So I'm gonna play it, but I'm gonna mute it because sound kind of is a little funny. So this uh, Robot Shakespeare project, we didn't invent it. This was actually invented by Sue Mellon, who is a teacher um, just outside of Pittsburgh. 
and she had eighth graders read Romeo and Juliet. And then they had to pick a scene from the play and bring it to life with lights and motors. And what you can't hear is um, this is actually, uh, uh, the, the kids had to read the scene, read the dialogue of the scene, and then they had to sync up these little shoebox dioramas to the dialogue that they were reading. So a lot of kids, and I can attest from having been an English teacher, they're like, oh, Shakespeare is boring, nothing happens, but that's a sword fight right? That's awesome. There are people die in Shakespeare. People fall in love in very ill-advised ways. It's actually very interesting. There's all kinds of action. So you, they had to figure out what was really happening in, the, in Shakespeare at that point. But if we scroll down below, we can see that uh, we've also got listed out the teacher's objectives and learning goals. What was she trying to teach? and the standards that she's aligned to. Now, sometimes those are computer science standards, sometimes they're next generation science standards, but if you can look closely enough, these are actually ELA standards. She was teaching English, really deep English connections with computer science and robotics. So I feel like um, Hummingbird was such a, a, a huge thing in my brain when I first came upon it, because it wasn't just a way to like do a little something extra in English class. It wasn't just a way for me to teach English differently, although sometimes we need to spice up our curriculum. I actually believe that in some ways this is a better way to teach some English standards than writing an essay. If you want students to figure out what their poem is really about, doing a robot poetry project is a great way to do that. And I can say that with confidence because I've taught it. And it, it, just seeing what students do and how they reflect on the process is, is really pretty magical. Underneath here, she's also got her lesson procedures and all kinds of things um, to support you there as well. So that's all on the teach page. And then the last page here is the resources page. So these, uh, this is where we have all of our printable resources to help you translate all of that stuff into the classroom. So for example, we have this Your First Hour of Robotics lesson plan, and there's two different versions of this. I'm gonna go down and pause this video. Um, there's two different versions of this one. There's a bee waggle lesson plan one, and then there's a template one. But I'd recommend the, this bee waggle lesson plan one. What it asks you to do, if I open it up and take a look at it, um, it's a full step-by-step -step explicit lesson plan. It's got some suggested teaching time, some suggested craft materials, some suggested hardware. And then talks a little bit about computational thinking, if that's something you're interested in, and tells you how your kids are gonna do some computational thinking. Here's how to set up and prep your room and materials. In here you see the guiding question, which is how can you recreate the motion of a bee waggle dance with robotic components? And then we get into our challenge steps. Um, so there's two different versions, an easy one and a hard one. We give you some cheat code. And then you get into the lesson plan. It takes 20 minutes to teach single color LED and position servo, those two modules. Then you watch this little video about how bees communicate by wiggling back and forth. It's a little three, two and a half minute, three minute video. Of course, mine has an ad, great. Um, if I go back to the lesson plan here, that video is also um, pinned down here. So there's the video right there. But um, about how bees just communicate with each other by wiggling back and forth. And here's some examples of what a real teacher did in their classroom with their students. So I really like that as an entry point. And just to show you some other versions of what the bee waggle could look like, these are ones that have been created in workshops that I've taught. So asking teachers who've never programmed or built anything before, within the first hour that I'm with them, I get them to blink a light, move a motor, make a bee, connect to a little bit of content, and use a little bit of craft supplies. And so it connects with this video about how bees communicate, which is super, super cool. Um, so. That is all on our website, Program, Build, Teach, and Resources. And one last thing I wanna point out on this resources page, there are all kinds of printable resources. There, there's a prototyping guide, there's, this, an, there's a prototyping activity, there's assessment guides, there's printable coding cards, which are awesome. They're like a printed version of those online video modules and tutorials. And there's even grant support. If you're looking for a grant that could help you get hummingbirds in your classroom if you don't have them, um, this is a whole list of people who like to give money for stuff like this. And furthermore, there's even a Google Doc on here, this grant guide. This Google Doc has a bunch of words and text on it about how to talk about hummingbirds, how to talk about finches, which I'm gonna show you in just a second here, so that you can convincingly talk about this in your grant. And our, our whole theory here is that you should feel free to copy, modify, 
or ignore anything you see on our site. That's why we make this all there for free because it's there as a tool for you to use in your classroom. Um, so that's an overview of our site and where you can find all of the things that we didn't cover today, like motors and sensors and projects, really putting something um, into context there. Um, we've got just about 10 minutes left. I want to give you a quick demo of our Finch robot, which is similar to Hummingbird in some ways, but a little bit different. So I just want to show you that, especially if you work with younger students, Finch is a really great option for that. Or if you're really wanting to zero in on just computer science, if you don't have time for all the engineering and building that you do with Hummingbird, um, Finch can be a great option for that. But then I also want to leave plenty of room for questions as well. So if you have some questions, go ahead and start typing those into the chat window and I'll kind of answer them as they come up. Um, but then there's a couple really cool things I'll share with you at the end about discount codes that you get as a result of attending today's webinar. So first things first though, this right here is the Finch robot. So this is similar to Hummingbird in some ways. It's got motors. It's got lights in the beak and also in the tail here. It's got sensors, it's got a distance sensor, it's got some light sensors embedded into it there. It's got a micro bit and uh, it's similar to Hummingbird in some ways, but it's different in its emphasis. So I'm gonna turn this one on and you're gonna see it's gonna start to flash three letters on it. You may not be able to read it, but I'm gonna get my iPad back out here and show you what it's like to program a Finch. So I'm gonna disconnect my Hummingbird, although I could actually connect multiple devices to an iPad. I'm gonna just search for my Finch now. This is FTM, which is Furry Tangerine Monkey. That's what my Finch is called. Great. So I'm gonna go back to robots, and there we go. Here's all my Finch blocks. So if I wanted to make my Finch move forward for 10 centimeters at 50% speed, let me back it up so you can actually see it go. Click on it, aha. If I click on the block, it moves forward. I could make it turn right. Uh, let's go 180 degrees at 75% speed. Great. Turn all the way around. Great. I can make it move. I can make the beak light up. It's a tricolor LED in there, so I don't want it to be red. I want it to be red and blue. What to, what, when you put red and blue together, what color do you get? Let's find out. You get pinky purple. Isn't that the most beautiful thing? If you've used an old Finch before, you'll notice this one's a little different, and that's because this one is a Finch 2.0. This does some things, so now I can also make the tail parts light up. I can um, do all kinds of things with the different sensors, the distance sensor, the light sensor, the accelerometer. It's got all kinds of really cool things that you can do with it in there. And we are, I'm currently writing a bunch of curriculum and activities for this, so if you follow me on Twitter or if you follow BirdBrain on Twitter, um, you'll see I just taught a, a workshop at the iTech conference um, with finches and we did finch jousting. So they had to engineer some, with craft supplies, a way to get this finch to knock a ping pong ball off of an upside down cup. That was their challenge that they had to do. So they had to write an algorithm on bird blocks and they also had to engineer a physical solution to that. But I'm going to disconnect this for a minute because um, as you saw before, Hummingbird works with Python and Java, which are text-based coding languages, and it also works with BirdBlocks, MakeCode, and Snap, which are block-based coding languages. Um, and Finch also does that, Python and Java, BirdBlocks, um, MakeCode, and Snap. But Finch also works with an icon-based programming language called FinchBlocks. So I'm going to show you FinchBlocks right now. FinchBlocks is appropriate for pre-readers, um, so pre-K through up to fourth or fifth grade. So this is what Finch Blocks looks like. I'm going to go ahead and connect to Furry Tangerine Monkey in this program now. There we go. Great. And so here's what it looks like if I were to drag up this forward icon, this turn icon, the red nose, the green tail, and let's make it play a couple of notes as well. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see that a little bit better. And now when I tap the green flag, watch what it does. It goes forward. It turns to the left, the nose turns red, the tail goes green. And I don't know if you could hear that, but it plays those notes. So you can use all of those outputs in a way that requires no reading, no math, and is totally appropriate for very young coders, very young learners. But that's just level one. I could also go up to level two, and now 
I have some control over how far it goes. I want it to go, I don't want it to go 10 centimeters, I want it to go 19 centimeters. And I don't want it to turn 90 degrees. Watch this as I move my little finch icon, watch what happens to the picture of the finch over here. I want it to turn 180 degrees all the way around. And I want a little more control. I don't want the nose to be blue. I want the nose to be pink. Great. Now let's watch it run my program. Go forward 19 centimeters. Oh, come back. And then turn 180 degrees and then turn the nose pink. So it gives you a little bit more control. And in level three, it gives you even more control than that and starts giving you access to some gold control blocks. So this can level students up from pre-K up through third, fourth, fifth grade, when at that point they'd be ready for bird blocks or make code or snap or one of the block-based coding languages. Um, so Finch is really a pre-K to college programming tool that you could use across an entire district. So if you're with an AEA, that means you don't have to have four different tools that you train all the different teachers with. If you're a kindergarten teacher and you learn how to use this and then suddenly next year you get moved to fourth grade, you don't have to learn how to use a different tool. This is a tool that one person in the district can know how to use it and can support all the teachers in the district to do physical computing and computer science in their district. So this guy's available for pre-order right now. It's going to start shipping in um, about March of next year. Um, oh, one other feature I wanted to show you. What I have here are just 3D printed prototypes, and this is sort of the nicest looking 3D printed prototype, but it doesn't have a hole right here. The actual finches will have a hole there for, let's say, a marker to go in so that you could draw with your finch, get it to roll around and draw, which is really cool. It's really fun to do. Um, so with just a couple minutes here, um, does anybody have any questions? I believe I gave everybody the ability to also, you could also unmute yourselves, which is in the bottom uh, left-hand corner of your screen if you wanna ask questions with your voice as well. You could do that. Um, or you could ask questions in the chat window. Um, and then I'll also give you, here's our sort of, what's next? What should I do after this? Well, something that's super exciting for y'all is that if you want to get anything, if you want to get a set of hummingbirds or you want to get a finch, um, you get 15% off of all purchases that you make for the next three months. So this expires December 24th, but this is your discount code. And I'm gonna put that in the Google Doc and I'm also gonna email that to y'all tomorrow um, so that you have that discount code. So if you or your school want to purchase anything, you get 15% off of all of our products which is super cool. Um, also, if you are working with a demo kit, with a little base kit, you can purchase that kit and you can get 20% off, basically, because it's used. <laughs> you used it, but still, uh, if you want to keep your demo kit, you can do that at 20% off. So Allison Lombacher is our, our um, marketing person and she's been emailing you about that demo kit. You just respond to her when she says, hey, it's time to give that back. You can say, no, I wanna keep it. Give me 20% off and she'll say gladly. All right, but then the other thing that you could do, if you wanna talk to me more, um, I'm gonna send an email tomorrow so that you'll have all of this stuff in an email as well. But if you're interested in self-paced video courses, Matt and I have created those um, for Make Code Snap and bird blocks. So if you're interested in pur purchasing a video course, it's about an hour's worth of video. It covers a lot more than I could in this hour because I'm also like telling you all kinds of things that a hummingbird is. But um, in about an hour's worth of video, spaced out over 14 videos, we go through exactly, um, exactly how to um, plug in a light, do a motor, do a sensor, how to build with it. We go through all sorts of content connections. Uh, we got it down to a real si science in a way that we could cover all of that in an hour. Um, so if you're interested in those self-paced video courses, in live stream learning, which is what I'm doing here where I have a kit and you have a kit and we all learn together, that could be something that you do across like your whole district. If you got a kit like this for each school and after school or during your RTI time or during your PLC time or whatever, you wanted to give your teachers a chance to learn with me, instead of paying to fly me out, paying for all my travel costs and everything, you could just do live stream learning like this and we could all learn even in different locations at the same time. Or if you wanna go for the, the full thing, 
Um, we also do on-site workshops. I do on-site workshops. So um, if you want me to come out and do like a two-day workshop with your teachers or a one-day workshop with your teachers, wherever you are, um, whether you're in Iowa or Florida or Virginia or wherever, I can certainly come out to you as well. Um, so I'm going to put my, I think it's this one. Nope, it's this one. Nope, it's this one. Aha. There we go. So that's me. Um, that's my email. And you'll be getting an email from me tomorrow as well. Um, but you can email me, even if you just want to talk for 20 minutes, there's a way that we can very quickly set up a quick 15 to 20 minute video chat. If you're just like, this seems interesting, but I'm not quite sure what my next step is. I'd love to talk about PD, or I'd love to talk about Finch a little more, or I'd love to talk about your thoughts on Hummingbird. Um, definitely keep an eye out, especially if you're in Iowa. There are some really big things happening in Iowa with Hummingbird and Finch over the next like six months. Um, there's potentially some work that we can do with the AEAs. I know um, Shell Lehman is, or Shelly, excuse me, Shelly Lehman from um, the Femineers program, which is run out of the University of Iowa. They already do some really cool things with hummingbirds in the Femineers program. And if you haven't heard of Femineers, definitely look them up. It's a really cool program. And they even have an adopt a school program where they can fund your school to get some hardware and some PD and sort of adopt your school to, to get cool hardware and cool CS learning. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll be sending uh, a lot of this information out, especially that Google Doc, your discount code, and the information that's on the screen right now to you in an email tomorrow. But feel free at any time to just email me. I am here to answer questions and here to serve. So thank you all so much for joining me today. Um, I'll stick around for the next 10 minutes or so if anybody wants to ask any questions or if anybody wants to unmute themselves to just say hi or ask a question with your voice, that's okay too. Um, especially if, if you didn't get your light to blink, raise your hand. I want to get your light to blink before you leave today. So thank you all so much for joining me though. I'm going to drink from my owl mug. <laughs>